Uh, what do I do now moving forward with my wife after she moved out, started having an affair with a coworker, and now has come back and wants to stay married, but shows little to no remorse for what she did? You have a wife that cheated on you with a coworker, and she's openly mocking you in the home that y'all have built together. Yeah. That's madness, Sam. What in the world's going on? This is John with the Dr. John Deloney Show, talking about your life, your relationships, your mental and emotional health, whatever you got going on in your world. If you want to be on the show, we're talking with real people who are going through real challenges. 1-844-693-3291. And because I put one in front of that, you know I'm a thousand years old. Call 844-693-3291 or go to johndeloney.com slash ask. And please, 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 please hit the subscribe button. Makes all the difference in the world if you like it or subscribe it or review it. All, all those things that the internet people tell you to do so that other people on the internet think that you have value. That would be so great. And it helps everybody out. Really, really, really blessed um, to have you guys along with us. Let's go out to Sedona, Arizona and talk to the SAM what is up, Sam? Hey, John. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm hanging in there. Excellent, brother. What's, um, what's up? So I'm going to read the question to you. I think there's a little bit more to unpack, but I'll let you kind of take it after that. But uh, my question to you is, uh, what do I do now moving forward with my wife after she moved out, started having an affair with a coworker, and now has come back and wants to stay married, but shows little to no remorse for what she did? and acts like it's not a big deal. Um, she also said to me uh, last week in conversation uh, that she still has feelings for this guy that she works with, but it doesn't matter because they don't talk or spend time together anymore. Um, I'm not really sure what to do. I've, I've lost a lot of respect for my wife, and I also just don't trust her um, for a multitude of reasons. And then I kind of want to add to that, um, that after she left and moved out, um, I went and slept with someone that I don't have contact with, that I don't have feelings for, Sure, because um, why, right? you know. why not, right? Because why? Right, exactly. because why not? You showed her, yeah. huh? Yeah, you um, showed her. Yeah, so this isn't. I just turned thirty this year, and this isn't like not really what I'd envisioned for my life. And I, I just, I hear you say all the time, you know, uh, I'll sit with you and help you figure out the next right move. And it's like I, I just really don't know what to do, John. Yeah. Um, Can I be super honest with you, Sam? Yeah. I think you do know you don't want to. I think you're probably right. Um, I think you 100% know. So let me ask you, what is, um, what's terrifying over that next hill? Cause you know, the hill you got to cross. I mean, we have a baby that's about to be two next week or actually on Sunday. Um, and then I have a stepdaughter, that I've raised her, her, her daughter since she was a year old that calls me dad. And so, um, I desperately want to, you know, be with my girls and, you know, wake up in the morning and, and, you know, get them dressed for school like this morning. And I want that. And I really just want to have a quote unquote normal life. And you but don't I also feel, and you don't, I don't, you don't. Right. So you can uncouple those things. There will be moments and mornings and time when you can wake up. I woke my daughter up this morning. It's one of my top five favorite things on the planet to do is wake up my daughter. My son, it's hilarious and it's funny. He's humongous and he's in high school, but my daughter's still really little. It's one of my favorite things in the world to do. So I'm totally with you Um, because she's hilarious and she's a little bit mean and a little bit sassy and it's just the whole experience is holy. I, I love it. I love it. So those moments will still happen. They won't happen in the fantasy that you're desperately trying to hold together that, that no longer exists. And, and I think, so one of the things here is like, so my wife in January told me she didn't want to be married anymore. February or March, she started talking to this guy and hanging out with him, going to lunch, whatever. And then March, she moved out. And the whole time she said, hey, like, I, I just need to, you know, I'm hurt from the past. I need to take a break, figure things out. But the whole time she was having a relationship with this guy. Hey, you just, circled, May, you just circled back around on me. Go ahead. No, you circled back around. Did you realize it? 
Because, so I, I guess what I, I, one of the biggest things I struggle with is like, if I, I heard a call last week where the, the caller said, your husband had an affair and he's super remorseful and, you know, apologized and kept apologizing. And I just feel like with my wife, it's like, it's almost, it's like a joke. Like, and she said to me last week as well, she said, Hey, I don't feel like this would be a big deal. Had we not got back together? And I said, but we did get back together. You, you came back. I didn't drag you back into this house. I, you know, I'm the one that filed for divorce because you're the one that told me to file for divorce. And so it's, it's a roller coaster ride. And I just, so get I off. do want to get off the roller coaster. So get off. That doesn't mean divorce. I'm saying stop the ride. Just stop. And when I said you circle back on me for some reason, and, and I say for some reason, um, nobody likes to sit and just, that black hole of grief. And especially when there's a hard decision to be made or multiple hard decisions, they're going to be chaotic and they're going to disrupt this world that we wish so badly still existed, but yours doesn't. You have a wife that cheated on you with a coworker and she's openly mocking you in the home that y'all have built together. Yeah. That's madness, Sam. Madness. And I completely reject, it doesn't matter if y'all were on a break, it still would have been a big deal. You know that, she knows that. That's just her way of dismissing her own guilt, her own lack of love, zest for her, the life that she has now, and you. But looping back and telling the story again from another angle and from another angle and thinking about it from another angle and listening to another podcast and reading another book about it, all that is serves as a Xanax. It serves as a way to tamp down the reality that I got a hill I got to climb and it's not going to be fun and I don't know what's on the other side of it. So let's let's go back just real quick. So before <laughs> we got married... <laughs> we're, we're, I, I'm laughing only because... <laughs> We're just going to loop back, but let's do it. I'll, I'll go with you on it. I'll go so, with you. So just, j just a little bit of like to set the stage. So back in 2019, we got married in 2021. So I've been married very long. Back in 2019, before we got married, um, I had was still having a relationship with the, the mother of my first daughter um, before we got married. And then after we got engaged, I stopped, stopped all of that. Um, but she found out about that. I obviously hid it from her. I was ashamed, embarrassed. It was wrong. Um, but I feel like the difference is, is I changed. I cleaned my life up, started seeing a counselor, asked God to forgive me, got back into my faith. And I'm, I know that I'm not the same guy that I was. And I, w I was not a very good husband out of the gate. I, I still probably am an idiot at times. But um, I know that I, I show up every day as a dad. I know that I, I try and show up every day as a husband. And so I know that I hurt my wife that would hurt anybody. Um, but I still don't feel like that is justified with what she went and did. And, and do you think I'm, I'm fair in thinking that? I think you did something that lacked integrity. And I think that from, I'm just hearing your side of the story here. It sounds like you took a knee and you said, I'm sorry, can we make this right? And she said, I do. And she said she forgave me. She said to me... Just, just stop, stop fall, for a second. Sit in it. She said, I do. And what should have happened there is she sat down and said, okay, here's what must be true for me to rebuild and reestablish trust with you. Something that happened two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, 20 years ago is never a license to go... ROI that or to go quote unquote balance the scale. That's what forgiveness is. It's taking the weights off the scale. I'm not even, I'm not carrying this for you anymore. She said, I do. And so that's not like, all right, so I'm going to put this in my pocket. I'm going to play this card one day. If I meet some coworker that I kind of want to sleep with, it's not, I'm going to put it in my wallet and I'm going to pull it out. Or I'm going to put it in my purse and pull it out when I can make fun of you for having your heart broken that I'm cheating on you again and again and again. The, the biggest thing, John, and 
we went to the county fair this weekend and we were driving back and I have not really seen this guy. I've just seen his car and we're at a light. I've got all three girls in the car with me and her and there he is at the light and he looks at us and I, it just eats at me, John, thinking about my wife sleeping with somebody else. And I, I don't know how to let that go regardless of everything else. I, Why would you let I that let... go? She's still but calling just... him, Sam. She still calls him. She laughs at you for getting, for feeling weird about it. You're not crazy. You're not crazy. And she won't change. Or let me say it this way. You can't make her change. She can't be in an active um, affair with somebody. You see that person and you look in the mirror and wonder what's wrong with you for getting upset about it. You're not the problem here. All the lamps in your living room are gaslights, brother. Yeah. Here's here's your next step, my man. I want you to spend some time. Stop talking. Stop listening. Stop reading. I want you to spend some time with you. Go to a coffee shop this evening. Or if you're working from home, take a couple hours off or take a longer lunch, whatever you got to do. And I want you to write this stuff down. What must be true? For me to stay in this marriage with someone who is openly just rubbing my nose. That's what she's doing to you with her affair right now. I want you to write down what must be true. For me to stay in this marriage, this must be true. This is how I will reestablish trust with you. This is how we will reestablish trust together. That's the path back to trust that you've talked about before. Right. But you're trying and she is laughing at you. And somehow this has gotten twisted up in your heart and mind that because you did a thing five years ago, four years ago, whatever, that you kind of deserve this. And it's kind of all right. It just hurts. And you want you, since you deserve it, you want the hurt to not hurt so bad. This is the whole thing is so dysfunctional, it's such madhouse. But I want you to write down what must be true. And here's what's going to suck for you. You know, with some certainty, she's going to look at what you write down and be like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Right. And it will be confirmation. It won't be the explosion. It will be confirmation that things have already exploded. Do you get the difference? Yeah. What, one thing she said to me over and over again that's, that's confused and frustrated me is she said, well, I feel like it's two separate things. Like me being hurt from the past and, you know, our relationship breaking down and me having a relationship with this guy is two separate things. And I said, I don't see that being two separate things. Like it's Sam being, you can't figure <laughs> you can't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm just trying to stop the loop. Right. You, I, I, you have, so I don't want this for my life. I, I don't. I, absolutely. You didn't, I wouldn't want this on anybody, but you have, I said to my, I said to my therapist last week, I said, I would, I said, honestly, I said, I really want to talk to Dr. Deloney. I said, there's, I said, I, I don't know what to do. I tell my therapist this every week. And, you know, it's like now I'm talking to you and it's like, you know, I, I, like what you said, I, I think I do know what I need to do, but I don't want to do it. And listen, I can't make you do it. And I'm not even going to tell you what it is. I just know that you have this path in front of you. And for some reason, you won't walk it. You just keep looping back around to the parking lot. You've done it like four or five times on this call. The fact that you have a therapist that you see every week and you tell him, hey, I'm going to call this goofball on YouTube and ask him. You know what I mean? Like, you know. And I don't know what it is in your world or in your life that makes you so terrified of walking this path. 
or what I think it's the idea of of the life that I thought I'd have. It's over. The, the life that I wanted, and it's gone. It's, it's gone. Not there anymore. It's right. And so, it, it's it's. It's like your house has burned to the ground, but you're scared to call the fire department because they're going to show up and let you know that your house is gone. Like that doesn't like you not making that phone call to the fire department it doesn't make your house any less gone. And here's what really breaks my heart. I've seen situations this bad off where both people get in a room and they say, we made a covenant. We're going to rebuild this thing. And I've seen it happen and it's staggering. But you don't have someone who wants to rebuild with you right now. Maybe, probably even, never. Even if she said, the, the problem is, is it goes back to the trust thing. Like she left last night to go and do something. And I thought laying in bed, what she was doing, whatever she was doing. I thought, man, I don't even trust her right now. But, of course but not. the thing is, is, I don't trust her because there was, there was holes in our relationship. And instead of, talking to me and saying, Hey, I'm struggling with this and this and this. She outsourced to someone else and, and then it, it led to whatever it led to. But it's like, there's no trust there because I don't know in five years, if, if I'm a knucklehead and I do something stupid, she's not going to come to me and say, Hey, you know, you, I'm struggling with this. And so there's no trust there either. Because What's the best predictor of future behavior? The past past behavior. And behavior is the language, right? You, you say it all the time, and I, I wear that around my neck. Like She's so like, clearly communicating to you, brother. And everybody listening to this is going to hear it and see it. I'm, I'm literally heartbroken for you. But why move back home? Why, why you know, she went and rented this house on the other side of town. Like, like why, why all of this? Like, why not? Why is she back? That's what I don't understand. You know, because, another thing. Bro, you are a, you're a gravy train. You will do, you will put up with anything she does. You go, she sleeps with another guy at work and you go try to figure out what you did wrong. Your money keeps depositing in the account. You keep taking care of the kids. You're a catch, man. (laughs) For somebody who lacks complete and total integrity, you're a dream partner. I feel like a sucker. Like there are a lot of days I get up and it's you like, said it, not me. No, I, I and I, I've, I've, I, I thought it even this morning getting up, getting the baby ready. Like, and it's like <laughs> you get the baby. You, you do it all. <laughs> you do it all. You get the baby ready. You go to work. You put the money in the account. You pay the rent. You make sure the bills are paid. And she sleeps with a coworker, and he's like, "Well, two separate things. It's not even that big a deal. Why are you making such a big deal about it?" And then you go off going, God, why am I making such a big deal about this? I don't know how to forgive her either. Like, and I, that's I don't, not for right I don't now. Think, that's not for right now. Right. That's, that's what my therapist says. It's not for so, right now. So right now, what must be true, or have I heard you say in the past, like the path back to trust? Like The path back are, to trust, you, brother, is down the road. It's way down the road. Like your house is burning to the ground. And you're wondering where you're going to put the new sectional. We can get to the path back to trust and all that kind of kumbaya, like counselor language. You need to decide, as for me and my house, what must be true. And if you're going to keep contacting and sleeping with and hooking up with a coworker or trying to, and he won't even return your calls anymore. You cannot be in this home. I'm worth more than that. And our kids cannot see that this is what love looks like played out in real life, period. And I'm allowed to get my feelings hurt if you cheat on me. I'm allowed to be enraged and angry and frustrated and disappointed and heartbroken. And I'm not wrong for having those feelings. And you see what I'm going on and on. Somehow you turned off your ability to feel. And I don't know how long that's been turned off, but it's been turned off a long time. 
and somebody redirected that ray gun right into the middle of your chest so that every feeling you have comes back to something you screwed up and you did wrong. Never in a million years that I think this person that loved me and cared about me and was so loyal to me would change, but that person's not there anymore. Okay, own, they, they choose reality. Choose it. Right. Choose it. Then the best you can do is go make the next right move. I want you to write down, spend a couple of hours, and, and, and often, you hear me say this all the time, there's something about casting these stories in a narrative. And stories cast in a narrative in the form of a letter, they tend to get our brains just flowing and flowing and flowing. So maybe it comes out as, dear wife, this is never a letter that you're going to send, but it will clarify things. I did this to you four years ago, five years ago, six years ago, and we asked for forgiveness. Here's who I've become since then. And then here's what I've experienced with you. If we were to rebuild something new, what we had is effectively over. And I liked our old life, but it's gone. If we are to regain and rebuild, not regain, but rebuild. Here's what this looks like. Here's what must be true. And I don't want you to do this at arm's length and keep circling around the parking lot. I want you to head off into the woods on that path that you know you got to go down. And I want you to feel this as you write it. You may have to make a... What, give, me, give me an example, like what must be true, like in John's world, what, what's one thing that must be true? As for me and my wife, we do not have sex with other people that we're not married to. Okay. That's As for good. me and my wife, we don't actively talk on the phone, go visit, hang out with, go to hotels with old boyfriends and girlfriends. As for me and my wife, if one of us has feelings about something, the other person doesn't make fun of them, call them dumb, say those aren't real. Blame them. When she says, though, I have feelings for this guy still, but it doesn't matter because we don't talk or see each other anymore. We see each other at work, and that's it. What, I don't know what to say to that. It's like, I don't have feelings for anyone else. I, I'm, not, I'm not talking to anyone else. You can look at my phone. You can, you can check anything you want. Like, I, I don't have any of that. Here's what a, a path back. So let me put myself in, this, in your situation. Let's say I'm you, and this is my wife. Okay. Step number one, quit your job or don't be married to me. Period. Here's life. We have feelings for each other. That's why most um, uh, outside of dating apps or right on top of dating apps statistically, um, marriages are, are found between people at work. It's also the number one place where fairs happen. Because people have a common purpose and they laugh and they tell jokes. They spend hours and hours and hours and hours together. Feelings happen. And then it's your responsibility to take yourself out of a situation where those feelings can get gas dumped on them 24-7, 365. How committed are you to the covenant that you made till death do us part? And if it's turned back on me, that's that's what you call gaslighting. Well, you don't seem very. Doesn't you know, there's days where you don't seem like you want to do this. But that's a that's fishing that expedition part. to see if you will go ahead and cash out. <laughs> because she doesn't have the courage to actually leave. You know why? Because you're a gravy train. Right. That'll be my next tattoo. Gravy train. Don't get that tattoo. <laughs> that would be awesome, but don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Maybe make yourself a list. I am heartbroken about. Like, I'm heartbroken about what? I am angry about what? I'm so confused about. Like, or sit with your counselor and say, I've lost an ability to feel. You have turned off the spigot so hard, man. But for whatever it's worth, you're not crazy. 
I appreciate that. You're not crazy. This is hard, and this is the, you know, especially kicking off the year in January, this is, this is the heaviest, worst thing I've ever lived through in my life. Like, it is. I know I haven't lost lost a child or a family member, but... This is hard. Like, this is hard. Losing your whole life and just... And everything I thought... Um, I, I got a tattoo on my wrist after she left and said, this too shall pass. And I look at it every day, but it's like, man, like, I don't... I don't know what I want to pass here. Like I, I know this will pass. This won't. These feelings won't last forever. The the thoughts of her having sex with somebody else is not going to not going to be in my mind forever. But well, if she keeps just, doing it, it will. There has right. to be a period on the behavior. It has to stop. We haven't even made it three years. October will be three years. I know. Um, you you have this wild inability to hold reality. And that's your that's your that's your assignment, man. What is true? What is true? What is true? Call me anytime, Sam. This is I mean, this path is is hard, and it's just going to get harder and more complex as you as you make decisions on what you're going to do. And I'm not going to tell you what to do or how to do it or final final choices. But I think you know you when you called in, you knew what what comes next here. And you know there's a hill you got to climb and it's in a dark forest and you got to go anyway. Find somebody to go with you. Stop circling the parking lot. Get your flashlight and let's get going. Call anytime, brother. We'll be right back. Thank God fall is finally on the way and the weather is starting to break. And some of you are already sipping on some sort of pumpkin-y spice something or other. Listen, fall is an incredibly important time of transition for our homes. We go from being hot and outside all the time to warm and cozy around a fire. And it's up to us to create this atmosphere of warmth safety, and peace in the midst of our busyness and chaotic schedules. One of the ways me and my wife do this in our home is with the soft warmth of cozy earth bedding and bath linens. And now they're super comfortable tops and shorts. And all of this is 40% off. I love the cozy earth bamboo sheets that are getting softer and softer every time we wash them. And my Lux towels that are insanely soft and plush and cozy. And I'm pretty sure they were made at Hogwarts with some sort of wizarding technology. And I also recently got my hands on their line of shorts and my wife got their sleepwear. It's all amazing. And of course, everything Cozy Earth creates is made with the best source ingredients on the planet. And of course, you know, as well as I do, a good night's sleep plays a critical role in every facet of your life. But here's my biggest support shout out for Cozy Earth. My wife and I could sleep on any sheets in the world, and we bought Cozy Earth sheets with our own money long before Cozy Earth was a show sponsor. And my family could use any towels and bath products out there, and we choose Cozy Earth. Cozy Earth just rules. And now... Cozy Earth is going above and beyond for you just for listening to this show. Go to CozyEarth.com slash Deloney right now for 40% off Cozy Earth products. Yes, you heard that correctly. 40% off. Use code Deloney or visit CozyEarth.com slash Deloney to unlock this offer. And if you say that we sent you in the post-purchase survey, because why not? We're going to hook you up with a free pair of Cozy Earth socks. Transform your night and your morning routine with Cozy Earth. Hey, good folks. It's important to get away for times of prayer and meditation by yourself with no one else around. I do this every single morning. But one thing you might not think about, though, is maintaining a sense of community when you meditate or when you pray. And especially if you don't consider yourself religious or if you question things or if you've been burned by a past church experience, it's hard to want to do this kind of spiritual meditative type of thing with other people, but it's important. And that's another reason why I love Hallow. With Hallow, you can personalize your prayer experience and your meditation experience, and they give you three free months to do this. You can go at it all by yourself, or you can connect with friends and family, or you can find a prayer group or some other community that you choose. And you can share prayers, you can share meditations, or you can even share your journal reflections to grow in your faith together with others. 
And there are ways you can personalize Hallow just for you. They have downloadable offline sessions and links ranging from one minute all the way up to an hour so you can listen whenever it works for your schedule for as long or short as you'd like. And all of this is why Hallow is the number one prayer app in the world. And viewers and listeners of this show get three free months when you go to hallow.com slash Deloney. I think it's incredible. That's three free months of the app when you go to hallow.com slash Deloney. All right, we are back. Listen, me and Rachel Cruz, Rachel Cruz and I is the right way to say that, are doing a new virtual event. It's a money and marriage date night, October 29th. And if you're not available October 29th, you can watch it for up to a week after the actual event. And you can attend this anywhere, even from your couch. Don't be weird, but yes, you can attend from your couch. Two-hour event features a lot of the incredible weekend from the Money and Marriage Getaway. Um, Rachel Cruz and I'll be talking about budgeting and money and sex, intimacy, how to deal with the holidays coming up, all of it. And we're going to have some Q&A time so we can address your questions live from your homes um, directly. So you don't want to miss this. It's going to be really rad. And it's going to, here's the, here's the goal. We're doing it late October. One of the most common questions we get is how do you navigate the holiday season financially? How do you do boundaries? How do you navigate it together? Kids out of school, parents saying you got to do this and all that stuff, the extra work, not having any money, all of it, all of it, all of it. Early bird tickets are 39 bucks, just 40 bucks, 20 bucks a piece. And it goes up after October 6th. So go ahead and get your tickets now. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash events. All right, let's go out to the home of Allison Chains in Soundgarden, Seattle, Washington, and talk to Bree Ann. Hey, Bree Ann, what's up? Hey, Dr. Deloney. Um, <laughs> nothing much. I'm just here talking to you, I guess. Me too, except I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm kind of a poet and I didn't even know it. What's up? <clears throat> so I'm just calling because I want to know if my boundaries are fair or if they are preventing my kid's dad from being the father that he wants to be. All right, let him rip. So a couple months ago, I got custody and full decision making of my now nine month old daughter and my ex appropriately got supervised visits at an institute a couple days a week. Um, why, wait, wait, why supervised at an institute? Is he a not very nice um, person? <laughs> uh, to summarize, yes, there was some, um, I want to say mild, um, I'm, I'm too proud to admit this normally, but I want to say like mild domestic violence and um, some substance abuse in our relationship, especially pregnancy and postpartum. Um, Brianne, and, what is mild physical abuse? Um, <laughs> I, I guess I would... <sighs> overpowering, um, blocking an exit, um yanking keys from my hand or out of the ignition of my car while it's running and throwing things and yelling. And I just, I mean, he didn't technically cross like any lines where you would be like, he hit me or he hurt me. But I mean, he's, he's a blue belt in jujitsu and he knows how to like calmly, but inappropriately like physically overpower someone. Um, and, you know, just kind of like up, up, I'd say up to where you would think that what would be next would not be good. Will you do me a favor? Just, just yeah. friend to friend. <laughs> Will you never apologize for being scared again? Ever, ever, ever. In a weird way, it feels like that's giving you some sort of power in this situation. It's not. It's taking reality from you, which takes power from you. You're right. Is that fair? <laughs> Your greatest strength in this moment is the truth. I've rolled with blue belts before. <laughs> in fact, the last time I got tapped out bad was by a guy who was probably 40 or 50 pounds less than me. Who was a blue belt? No, he's probably he was bigger. He was he was a brown belt. He was tough. I know personally. Don't ever apologize for that again. Okay. 
Okay. Because <laughs> there were moments when you were pregnant and right after you had an infant, you were scared for your life, weren't you? Yeah. And you knew without a shadow of a doubt, if he set off, there was literally nothing you could do physically, right? Yeah. That's abuse. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think I'm too proud to like, I'm, I wouldn't label myself as one of those like stereotypical patriarchy, like, or sorry, I just swore, but you know, you're fine. You're fine. Um, strong, strong women, but, um, I'm used to kind of, I want to be in control of myself in situations and I want to make sure I, I like being in situations where I know I've got me because I've been able to trust very many people in my life. And you've also um, learned daddy issues galore. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of that textbook insight and a lot of the podcasting in, in 21st century, like, yeah, all that is well and good. When you get run up against a male who has the training and the strength to hurt you, all that goes out the window real fast, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I also spent most of my pregnancy because I, I was, I didn't have a car most of the, oh, all the, actually, no, that was after our kid was born, but I didn't have a whole lot to do and it was cold outside. So I spent a lot of time actually in there watching. <laughs> so I knew. <laughs> Great. Yeah. All right. So how can I, how can I help right now? Your husband gets um, gets very limited, supervised by a professional um, visitation with his child on a limited basis. Go ahead. Um, so, well, also another like plot twist is we were never technically married. We were never married. That's but, fine. Um, he he. Um, so the substance abuse. That was one, but also just so he has these supervised visits. The commissioner ruled on it and everything, and when he wants. Um, and he's been threatening legal battle, more, more legal battle. If I don't comply, um, he wants to see her on his own. He wants to see her or he wants to start off by seeing her with me. Um, the answer is no, the commissioner ruled period. Yeah, exactly. If he that's, wants to take you to court, he can take you to court. But <laughs> with these things that he's threatening, it makes me afraid that he's going to somehow get like he has this and this is funny he has this recording that um he got right as he was about to walk out the door into another girl's bed she knew i wasn't gonna want to happen um so he only he would do this but he presses record and puts it in his pocket and records me saying pretty much everything he wants to hear there were moments where i was pushed into fight or flight mode during some of these altercations what did you say brian were with him I, I, you know, pretty much because there were, there were like, what did you say, Brianne? What did you say? I admitted to slip. I admitted to slapping him a couple times. Okay. Um, I, you know, went on and on. I don't even remember all this. This is just kind of what he's telling me. Okay. Two, two um, things, two things, thing. two things. Number one, have you heard this recording? No. Okay. I don't but believe I it. I know he has it. I don't believe it exists. That's number <sighs> one. Number two. If you're worried about getting choked out and killed, which is language used in jujitsu gyms, and you slap somebody, I'm going to call that fair play. It's called self defense. <laughs> I okay? guess that's what I would call it. Too. So, so listen, <laughs> stop. So, stop. Okay. If he wants to take you to court, you can go to court. The commissioner's already ruled. A new court would have to overrule an, a, a, a previous ruling with new evidence. And if there has already been proven to the point that he has to have supervised visitation in an institute, and you, a smaller person, Try to defend yourself. You see what I'm saying? Like it, 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 yeah. it's it's you conjuring up stories to try to keep you safe in these imaginary worlds, and it just spins and goes and goes. It's and suddenly you're not dealing in reality anymore. Okay. 
Yeah. Here's the best thing for you to do. Exactly what the court has told you to do. Until you find out that that is no longer safe. And then you get an attorney and you go make sure your child is safe. That is your number one priority. Safety of your child. Safety of you. Oh, yeah. Well, and part of what I experienced triggered this, like, primal need to protect her. No, 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 no. From all this stuff. There, and there, it's whether you experience something as a kid or not. Don't bring that stuff back. Well, with him, I mean, the stuff I experienced with him. Okay. Do you think he's going to hurt this baby? Um, <laughs> I don't think he would intentionally. Okay. I think he... that's also where part of his substance abuse comes into play. That's right. Because um, some of the most extraordinary, calm, gentle people I've ever met were in a jujitsu gym. Yeah. But you throw substance abuse in there, and who cares about the training? That goes out the window. That just becomes a weapon at that point, right? All that to say is this. Your boundaries are about safety and about um, what you need to be whole and well. And then get on down the road. And if you get calls and threats, then I want you to do the right thing and call the authorities. If you get calls and threats and texts and things like that, then let the commissioner know or let your attorney know. And living in this constant state of, well, this might happen, this might happen. I said this thing and I admitted to this thing on some imaginary recording. Maybe that recording is real. Okay. You're not going to blackmail me into violating what this judge has already said. If you want to change what the judge says, take me to court and we will go do that again. And we'll keep going. This person is going to be in your life forever because you all share a child together. This person is not safe. It's best to call it out now. This person's using drugs around your kid. This person's not safe, et cetera, et cetera, and on and on and on and on and on. Let's exhale. <sighs> let's exhale. And let's start living in reality. Let's do the next right thing for your safety of the child, safety of you. And if dad stops using drugs and dad goes to a treatment program and dad starts making some strides, then we all go back to court and we make peace with this relationship moving forward. And that'd be ideal for the baby. It'd be ideal for everybody. But he's got some decisions he's, he's got to make. And threatening and blah, well, that's not the way to do it. It's not the way to do it. Thanks for the call, Brianne. We'll be right back. Helix is the best mattress in the world ever. And I've been on all types of mattresses. Cheap ones, thin camping mattresses, dorm mattresses, super expensive mattresses. You name it, I've tried it. And Helix outshines them all. And Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. Because everyone is unique and everyone sleeps differently. And that's why they offer a 100-night trial to try out your new Helix mattress. And Helix has many different mattress models to choose from, each designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. I want you to take the Helix sleep quiz and find your perfect mattress, and it takes less than two minutes to do this. They have models specifically designed for you side sleepers, you stomach sleepers, for back sleepers, for everyone. And plus, Helix has enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night. And if your spine needs some extra TLC, they got you. Helix is a mattress that everyone in my family sleeps on. It's the perfect combination of comfort and support. And here's the best part. Helix mattresses all come with a 10 or 15 year warranty depending on the model. And right now, Helix is offering 25% off all mattress orders plus two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash Deloney. That's helixsleep.com slash Deloney. With Helix, better sleep starts right now. All right, let's go out to Biloxi. Biloxi. What a cool name for a city. Talk to Lucy. Hey, Lucy, what's up? Hi, how's it going? I'm doing great. How about you? Good, good. I'm glad to be talking to you. I'm glad to be talking to you. What's happening? Um, super nervous, so uh, just if you could help me, that would... <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're here. Okay. What's up? Thank you. Um, uh, my question is, how do I know if quitting my job is the right next step right now for me? 
um, I feel like I've given this a lot of thought and, and I feel like I know that's the right next step, but there's a lot of fear attached to, you know, making such a big decision. Um, and so just trying to work through that and make, make sure, you know, it's, it, it is the right next step. So take me to the fear. What are we scared of? Um, I think there's fear in um, making a choice, um, you know, such a big choice, uh, a decision that will impact me and my family and um, ending up in a worse spot than I am right now. So I'm not following through with making changes. Have you ever not followed through before? Um, No. Okay. I didn't think so. I can I, I I'm going to be super honest with you. I'm fishing here, but I don't think that's the real fear. Mhm. Who in your house is going to be mad at you or disappointed in you if you change careers? I don't I don't think anyone would be except um except myself if I make this decision and I, you know, end up in a worse situation than I'm in. Why are you in a worse situation? Why are you in a bad situation now? Um, just, uh, just feel broken, you know. And I wouldn't want to be, uh, I guess, financially broke and broken. Okay. Um, Tell me about being broken. Um, I don't know any other way to explain it except uh, broken and um. Lost, I guess. What, um, what 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 broke you? Uh, I think I broke myself. I uh, ironically was I, by the grace of God led to um, your talk with Chris Cook yesterday, hmm. and it, I struggled with even how to pose this question to you or what my question even was. And listening to that podcast and the way he described um, the cycle. So going through this cycle of like pain and loss and then you isolate and you end up with broken spirit and kind of that whole cycle repeats. It kind of gave me a context for, I guess, I feel like that's what I've done my whole life is just kind of um, live through these cycles and you get to a point where you just kind of exist. And um, what what are you grieving, Lucy? um, What has been lost? God, I don't know. Is um, it a person? Is it a marriage? Is it children? Is it is it just you just thought being 50 would look different? You thought being 40 would look different? You thought 30? I mean I think it's it was a it was a lot of loss and um disappointment over the years. Tell me about it. Like, like who have you lost? Uh, what has been lost? Uh, um so I guess it started with I lost my dad when I was 10. Okay. Um shortly after that. I didn't physically lose my mother, but she was gone for a long time. Sure. Um, can I just, can I stop you real quick? Sure. I have, I have an eight and a half year old daughter. Mm-hmm. I've put in a ton of work and she's been working hard too. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing uncovered through just, it's almost getting broken out of concrete, a connection with her. That is so powerful, I can't even wrap my head around it. And the thought of me leaving when she's 10, a year and a half from now, I can't can't even think that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that happened. It um, seems like it was so long ago, it it almost feels silly, but I think... No, it's um, still right there at the top. It's still right there. For a long time. Mm-hmm. And then you turned to hug mom and mom was a ghost. And I'm not even going to blame mom. She probably did what she had to do to survive. But you turned to hug her as a 10-year-old and she was gone as a vapor. 100%, yeah. Yeah. So you've been on your own for a long, long, long time. Yeah. How old are you now? I'm 50. Okay. And um, I think that's part of it is a... Uh, 
I really feel like I want something different, something better, something more. And I don't, I don't want the next 50 to kind of look like, you know, the 50 I just lived. I totally get that, but you got to know that that's not out there. That's inside. Yeah. So I, uh, I'll just say that like my dad was a homicide detective and a SWAT hostage negotiator. And over a single weekend in his forties, he started working for a local church. He just quit. Yeah. And I was the, <laughs> I was the chief student affairs officer at a billion dollar university. And now I'm a YouTuber for God's sakes. Yeah. In my forties. You did good things with your life, you know? That's no, 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 no. I'm, I, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. My mom was a stay at home mom and she took her first, her first community college class at 42 and she got her PhD at 57 and she got tenured as a professor at 63. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I know, but here's what I'm telling you, you can do anything, but your convert and I'm just putting those things out there is don't be scared of the job thing. Mm-hmm. Just because you're 50, don't be scared of that. You can go, you can go make anything happen you want to make happen. Okay. That's not true. I kind of overstated that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> right. Or let yeah. me say it like this. Um, I, I wrote about this in the first book, my wife, but it was a conversation with my wife. Um, she had some friends that were like, I don't remember. I, I, I'll forget their age, but they were like 35 or something like that. And they were talking and they both were like, man, we always want to go to med school. Always want to go to med school. But by the time we get done with residency and everything, we're going to be 42 years old. Right. And my wife so wisely said, that's not the question. Like, that's not the issue. The question you should ask yourself is, I'm going to be 42. Do I want to be a doctor at 42 or not a doctor at 42? That's the question. And it was like, whoa, I guess if we frame it like that, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, go do whatever you want to do professionally at 50. More importantly than that, whatever it is you want to do is not going to solve that big hole inside your chest. Right. That one has to heal from the inside out. Yeah. I guess the hard part is figuring out how to do that. I feel like I've tried different things along the years, you know? Mm -hmm. Are you married? um, You have kids? I'm married. We don't have kids. Okay. How's your marriage? Um, it's good. Uh, I just feel like there's a, um, he's a very good man. I feel like there's a, uh, a disconnect. There's a lot of things I feel like he doesn't know about me and that we don't talk about, um, which I think creates even more loneliness, you know? Yes. And, and I need you to, to bifurcate those two things as a nerdy language. Um, I need you to separate. He can be the best man in the world and your marriage can be a wreck. Yeah. Yeah. He can be awesome and you can be awesome. And y'all could have made choices to not be awesome together. Yeah. And I'm increasingly, increasingly, increasingly hearing the phrase, I'm lonely in a bed I share with my partner. I'm lonely at a kitchen table with the person I'm married to. It's true. Yeah. We did a big survey here where I work. I think it was seven out of 10 people. Is it seven out of 10? Yeah, 70% or 80%. Their romantic partners did not know them. They reported that their person didn't know them. Didn't know they didn't, they were struggling with their spiritual life, with their sex life, with their de- decreasing ways. They, they looked at themselves in the mirror. They just, they, they didn't like who they were becoming, how they looked. They didn't know. The person who's right there. My guess is the healing starts from the inside out of you deciding I can be seen and known. Because what you've been carrying for a long, long, long time is I have to make sure everybody else is okay. And that kept you alive as a 10-year-old, by the way. Yeah. I got to make sure everybody's all right and I need to be unseen. Yep. For sure. 
and you can't carry that anymore. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of tired. Yeah, I can hear it on you. At 50, it's, it's, those, it's one of those magic seasons when you realize, like, best case scenario, I'm halfway, yeah. right? Yep. Statistically speaking, I'm way past halfway, but just in, <laughs> like in my yeah. fantasy life, I'm halfway. Yep. And I, and I love that. You, go ahead, love. I, I was just going to say, I just want it to be different. There you go. I was going to say the beautiful thing about you in this phone call is you have a realization that very, very few people come to. And that is this. You get to choose what happens next. You get to choose what happens next. And that should scare you and that should energize you at the same time. It does. It does. It scares me. Um, it scares me almost to not make a decision. Yeah. You know, I feel like to, to, to leave my job because I feel like it, for whatever reason, it is, um, I, I put everything I have into it so much so that at the end of the day, I don't have anything, I don't have anything left. So it's some, and it's a vicious, vicious cycle. I what, will what always do you do for give my time. Um, I'm a, it's, uh, just generically manager of operations for my company. So okay. we provide analytics reporting data to our customers and, uh, process improvement. Um, can I tell you something crazy? Uh huh. I travel the country and sit with business leaders behind closed doors. Okay. Often when people say what you just said, it's less the job. If you're a surgeon, mm -hmm. a trauma surgeon, or a police officer, you get home and your body goes, Ugh, right? Because you've almost mm -hmm. died throughout the day or life and death has been in your hands. Mm -hmm. What I hear from business leaders and business owners and those who are running and running and running and fighting the marketplace and trying to keep a team together and trying to be a good leader and on and on and on is that the lives they have created outside of the workplace are so devoid of life that they clock out and their spirit is gone. Yeah. So it's less the job. It's more about let's address this life we've created for ourselves at home. That feels like we're acting in a play that doesn't have a script anymore. Okay. Let's begin to sit down with somebody that says, Hey, we got married. We have, we have, Best case scenario, we got 50 years left. And 10 of those are going to be us sitting on the front porch making fun of how skinny these jeans are getting. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so let's pretend we have 40 years of rambunctious life left. I need you to know some things about me. And I believe I'm worth putting those things out on the table. And by the way, I want to know about you. My wife and I did an exercise. I, she did it for me. I didn't do it back. I'm pretty vocal, so I run my mouth a lot. So she already knows. But I asked her to make a syllabus for me. I know that sounds late, like lame. That's just two college, old college professors being lame in our own house. But I said, I don't know what podcast you listen to. I don't even know what books you like. <laughs> I don't know what theological things. I don't know what sex stuff. I don't know anything. I just know we're getting up every day and running through the motions. We have two right. kids and we're doing great in our business of our home. We're making money. Like our life is fine. I don't know you. Can I tell you something right. crazy? She, it took like 30 days went by. I don't remember a month or two went by. And I was like, Hey, you never sent me the syllabus. And she said, that's the scaredest thing you've ever asked me to do. <laughs> she said, I'm afraid I'm going to write this stuff all down and you're not going to like me. Yeah. And I yeah. exhaled. <sighs> After a quarter century, we're still wondering if each other likes the other person. Yeah. That's intimacy. It's true. Yeah. And the only way to not avoid that is to sit down and say, all right, here I am. Do you still like me? Yeah. What I told her was, I may think your books are dumb. I may not like your music, but I'll always like you. Right? And yeah. we laughed and, you know, and I've, I've got some books I'm trying to get through. They're pretty tough. <laughs> right? But... Here's the thing. It's, the, it's that exercise. 
What job are you thinking about quitting and go? I mean, what job are you thinking about going to? I, I really, I haven't, I was afraid to even think about that because I didn't want to just jump into kind of the same thing where it's just something that I've, you know, pour myself into and because, you know, I want to be a success and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just afraid of repeating this again. Okay. Like, I, That's the most brilliant thing I've heard in a long time. I wish people would have that same thought about dating. <laughs> well, I've, had, I've had my share of experience there too. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to spend some time doing this. Here's your homework assignment. Are you ready? Okay, yeah. Um, and you may have heard me talk about this because um, it was so revolutionary in my own home. Pick any random Tuesday in October. Okay. And I want you to spend some time with your eyes closed and I want you to actually go there to any random day in October. What would you want your house to feel like when you walked in the front door? Drop your shoulders. What is it? What would you want it to feel like? Uh, just sunny. <laughs> there you go. That's a start. And I want you to make your way around the room to the dogs in the house or if you have a cat in the house or to your husband in the house. Here was mine. The word I used was warm. I love sunny. That's awesome. I walked around this morning and opened all the windows in the house. Just I wanted the light in there. I wanted it warm and I wanted my wife. I wanted to be able to look across the house and see that she was happy that I just got there. Yeah. And I wanted my middle school son making fart noises because he just can't stop. And I wanted my daughter to come running at me in some kind of sword fight I was in that I didn't even know I was in. Right. And... When we start, did this exercise and my wife had hers, we had to reverse engineer it. Okay, what must be true? It wasn't that I quit my job, but I had to be intentional about not bringing that last meeting home. And I had to start exercising again. And I had to have a group of friends that I went out with once a week just to do ridiculous things like go to punk rock shows or go to comedy shows or just go have chips and queso and be an idiot. And, and my wife and I had to have a date night and I, it, it, we went on and on and on, but you see, we just reverse engineered it. What must be true? You're somebody who's very analytical and you think through things and you protect other people. And that's just who you are. What I want you to do is to be analytical and begin to protect Lucy. And the word I'm using for protect right now is love. I want you to love Lucy, man. And success, I want you to redefine what success is. Success is, yes, it's making money and it's being successful. Great. But what does success look like in your chest, in your own home? Yeah. And be ridiculous with it. Like actually create this picture. And then I want you to sit down and share it with your husband and say, can we make this thing go ch become true? Can we make this real? Because I think you can. Yeah, part of it is, you know, he's he's such a, a happy, easygoing guy. And, you know, he deserves to be happy too, you know. Both of you do. But here's what he, a happy-go-lucky guy really, really, really wants is a roadmap to his wife's heart. Yeah, it's true. He does. And it's not sexy, but it's practical to give him one. Right, right. Honey, when I get home, I want all of the dishes put away and I want you in the kitchen with no shirt on, just playing weird <laughs> Lionel Richie music. <laughs> I, I don't know Lionel what your Richie. thing is. Put your thing, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, everyone's got their things. I want you to put them down a piece of paper. Honey, I just want to not watch The Office ever again. I want to just read books with you next to me. Why? I don't know. I just do. Yeah. I want you to buy me one small gift because that makes me feel loved. I want you to leave me one note on the kitchen counter when you leave in the morning because it makes me feel loved. I don't. Everyone's got their things, but I don't know what those things are. But I want you to begin to, but for the first time in 50 freaking years, what does success in the middle of your chest feel like? And then what actions must take place? What must be true for this to work out that way? <sighs> And then, yeah, if you want to get another job, get another job. You know this about you. You work really hard. You know this about you. You're a good steward of people's paychecks. And you know this about you, that if they give you a team to lead, you're going 
you will sacrifice yourself on the altar of leadership. That's what a leader does. You get underneath the whole thing and lift it up. That's what a leader does. That's amazing. And you know, that comes at a cost. And so the work to be done is at home. And if this job is killing you, yeah, of course, get another job. You're, you're going to be amazing at it. But I don't think the workplace is where the, the poison is. I think the poison is in your reluctance to look in the mirror and put your fist in your chest and say, Lucy's worth being loved too. And so what must happen? What must be true for, for me to feel that way? For me to know this? For me to act on this? And the key here is specific. Be very, very specific. Try things out. Be honest when they don't work and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. I want you to write, this is your last homework assignment. I want you to write a letter to 60-year-old Lucy. Dear 60-year-old Lucy, here's the things I did at the age of 50 so that you could have the life you wanted at 60. I started exercising. I got a personal trainer. Me and happy-go-lucky husband started being super weird. He started cooking. I started whatever, a karate class. I don't know. Whatever y'all started doing. And then at 60, this is the life we got. It's an amazing investment in the one person that can bring you peace. You. I'm proud of you, Lucy. Thank you so much for this call. Call anytime. Hopefully we're still here in 10 years. You can call back when you're 60. We can all celebrate together. That'd be amazing. We'll be right back. I'm so proud that Thorn Supplements, my favorite supplements on the planet, have continued to partner with me and our show listeners for health, longevity, and just feeling good. Thorn is one of our longest standing partners on this show, and it's because I trust them, I use them, I read their research papers, and I know their products are great and that my fans will love them too. Here's the deal with supplements. There's so, so much garbage out in the marketplace. Trash, trash, trash. And other than my admitted gummy candy problem, I'm pretty freakish about what I put in my body. And that's why I trust my health and the health of my family with Thorn. Personally, I've been taking Thorn supplements for years and years, way before I was on the internets with these shows. And my wife and kids have been taking them as well. And here's what I take every single day. I take the super EPA fish oil, the methylated B vitamins, creatine, phosphatidylserine, and more. I take Thorn for specific physiologic needs for me to keep my body and mind optimized and for overall longevity and health. And here's the cool thing. We've set up an amazing opportunity for all of the listeners of the Dr. John Deloney Show. 25% off everything in the Thorn store and not just on your first visit, but every time you make a purchase through our page and our account. This isn't a sale that's going to change from week to week. All you do is go online Create an account through my page and you'll get 25% off from here on out forever. It's that easy. Go to thorn.com slash you slash Deloney. That's thorn, T-H-O-R-N-E dot com slash the letter U slash Deloney for 25% off everything in the store. I trust Thorn, my family trusts Thorn, and you can trust Thorn too. All right, we're back. All right, uh, Kelly, I posted something on the internets, on the socials. Yes, it actually uh, looks like you did this one today. Ah, today, yes. okay. I've been doing an experiment in my home. For the past month or so, I've started and ended each day by looking around and doing a quick chore that I normally don't do. I force myself to do this, especially when I am tired or grumpy or angry. Usually takes three to five minutes, and then I'm on about my regular routine. <clears throat> Sorry. I found that on the whole, I'm calmer, I'm becoming more integrated into my home, and I found the well of gratitude for my wife growing deeper and deeper. Try it. One small chore that you normally don't do in the morning and in the evening. Yeah. um, Gosh, I could reverse engineer this whole post. Long story short, my wife got to experience firsthand and see firsthand some of the vitriol that I have in this job. Like people send me messages, they get a hold of my email. It's it's tough. Like for as wonderful and gracious as this job is, it's um, it carries a lot. And so I remember her saying, "I had no idea." So that started me asking myself, "I wonder 
what I don't have any idea about, right? And so just this year, all the 17,000 portals that my wife had to navigate to get kids in school, like there's a lunch portal and an athletics portal and a medicine portal and a doctor portal and a portal for portals. And then there's, anyway, by the way, technology people, you said it would make our lives easier. It, you did not tell the truth. Yellow pads are still where it's at. Okay, so um, I also was finding myself increasingly frustrated. I'm grumpy, tired, et cetera, et cetera. And so I just, I, I knew I could not think my way out of this. And so I thought, what's one action I can do every day? And I'm just going to do an experiment and see what happens. And so before I leave every morning, I look around and see, is there something I can do three to five minutes? It could be as simple as there's some dishes in there. I'm just going to put the dishes in the dishwasher. It takes three minutes. It literally takes three minutes. Um, I'm going to sweep up real quick. I'm going to take this laundry basket. Here. It's just something so small. And then the first week or so, my wife noticed it. And I, I actually got a little more frustrated because I saw, started seeing other stuff left out. And I was like, hey, I started getting that indignant, righteous dad attitude. Like, hey, I finally did one thing right for the four, in 30 years and everyone should get on board. But once I got past that indignation, then I, I started looking forward to being present with my family because I feel like I was a part of the system instead of just this appendage that just would show up, right? And then I started adding in the evening. And so it's just a strange thing that I like being there and I feel more and more like they like me there. And I can't, it, it, this is all can be placebo. I can't think of anything else that I've changed other than what's one quick thing I can do in the morning and one quick thing I can do in the afternoon. And I can say to myself, hey, quote unquote, that's not my job. My wife and I have sat down and decided who's doing what this week. Doesn't matter. No, it's all of our job. And so what's one little thing? And it's just been bizarrely transformational. It's been strange. So how do you do it when you're the one that does those little things already? How do you do that kind of the opposite direction than when you want to help your spouse out with something, but you're already the one that does all those things? How so, do you find that thing to do for them? Um, it's, it, it, I mean, several years ago, it started with, I was started me and my son and we just go for a, a quote unquote drive on Sunday evening. What we were doing is we we're going to fill up mom's car for the week. I got frustrated that I was getting the car and it had no gas in it or whatever. So as, instead of complaining about that, I just said, let's solve it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to over, uh, over, I'm going to make sure my son sees this is what a husband does. He just gets in a car on Sunday night and goes and fills a car for gas. Right. So I think that has nothing to do with division of labor. That has nothing to do with what we've agreed on. That was just me trying to keep my eyes open for stuff, right? Um, on the other side, I last week I was gone for, I don't like to be gone more than one or two nights. And that a particular trip last week took longer because of the travel where the city was. It was a small town outside of a big city. So travel is just tough. Just walking in, my wife found a couple of things that normally I take care of. And it just made the whole thing smoother. And um, I could see now she's looking for what's one little thing I could take. And so it's just finding that thing, whether it's, um, I like to empty out my suitcase when I get home. I tell you what, man, if you walk in and that suitcase is just empty and everything, it just, it's, you just go, ah. So it's just finding a thing and everyone's got things um, that they are quote unquote responsible for. If you just, just go try it for 30 days and see what happens. It might just make you super angry and you hate everybody in your house. It has been so bizarrely transformational. It's just this continual reminder. Lane Norton, Dr. Norton always is saying, just shut up and go lift. Just go, ex the, the, just go exercise, right? Just go do it. Chris Williamson says like the, the, the success you want is found in the work you're not doing. Just go do something. Go read a book, read it. And similar to your marriage, like we want to do all these big extravagant things. Just put the dishes away, just vacuum. Instead of walking and being like, nobody vacuum, just grab it. It takes five freaking minutes. And I, I don't know. So far, so good. It's been a pretty transformational thing. So that's my challenge. Find one thing in the morning, one thing in the evening, three to five minutes, and it just changes everything. <laughs>